When something comes our way out of the blue that just doesn't make sense, when a fiery trial seems to be on the heels one right after another, Peter said this in 4, 12 to 13 of his first epistle, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Don't look at it as something that's a strange thing to the Christian life. But he says instead, do what? But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. And when his glory is revealed, speaking of the future, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Now, there are things that come into our lives that are strange to us, things that seem out of place or unexpected. And Peter reminds us not to look at them from that perspective, but rather rejoice even in suffering, because in that you are identifying yourself with Christ who suffered for the sins of the whole world. He also reminds us, remember, there's a future glory when his glory is revealed when Christ returns in all of his future majesty, that you indeed have a future that awaits you that is suffering, sorrow, and pain free. Now a little backdrop, First and Second Chronicles are actually one book. And originally they were written about 450 years before Jesus, about 500 years after King David lived, even though we'll find one of his songs in our text here this morning. It gives a history of God's unfolding redemptive plan for Israel and the world. Then it goes through a march of time, beginning with Adam all the way through the Babylonian captivity. So it goes through God's initial creation and Israel being taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. It was actually written, because of the timing we can recognize this, it was written for the post-exilic or those who were exiled to Babylon upon their return back to the city of Jerusalem. And they were facing the reality that their nation didn't exist in its former state and the city that they revered had also been destroyed. And the history was written to encourage and remind them that God is faithful and he had been faithful in the past to Israel and by nature he is faithful and God cannot alter who he is or his purpose and God will always be faithful to his word. 